call. You guys had your, uh, you had a scrimmage as well, just like the men did, but nobody got to see it. So what'd you think? Uh, we got we got some work we had uh, got to do. Um, that's what the scrimmage is for. Uh, overall, I thought we did a pretty good job, especially our our, our leaders. There's some things that we got to uh, get better at. Some of the small things, like talking a little bit more, um, rebounding a little bit better. And with that comes rebounding is boxing out, actually boxing out a little bit better, um, executing. When now we got our our players are understanding that especially some of our newcomers, that how much of pace and tempo that we've been preaching and talking about, how much they have to have to do it now. Because other teams, is, we're, not, we're not practicing against ourselves. So we know how fast each other go. We know how much we need to really press and push up on each other. And so now we got to move a little bit faster. Now I can teach a little bit faster because we've been slowing down and teaching a lot of things like our press, press break. We hadn't done any of those things uh, all the way up until we got to the scrimmage. And they came in and they, they pressed us. But we hadn't been able to put it in because we've had so many newcomers and I've just been slowly teaching the other things, um, our man principles, our zone principles, our man defensive principles, our zone defensive principles. So we hadn't really had an opportunity to put it in. So now our players are like, man, we got we to gotta pick up our pace and we got to pick up our thinking. And so now they're ready. It's, it's, it's amazing how one scrimmage can make a huge difference. Were there any individual performances that stood out to you? Yes, it was some pretty good individual performances. Uh, Alexis Gilbert uh, did really well, which we were expecting. Uh, Malaysia McHenry, she continued on with what she she did. She had a pretty decent performance. I think she probably ended up maybe with a double double. Um, and then uh, off the bench was uh, Dallas Jones. Um, she she really did a really, really good job of tempo and something that we've been talking to her about all season long last year, talking, tempo, and dominating the game on, on the defensive end. And, man, she, she did a really good job of that. So reminded me a lot of my uh, <clears throat> former point guard over here, Alyssa Shannon. So uh, she did a really good job with that. Actually, I had her this summer to watch Alyssa on video to watch about tempo and pace and all that stuff there and how to really control the game and um, different ways of handling the ball and getting people involved. So she did a pretty good job with that. What about your uh, rotation? How long do you think it'll take you to learn that? And what have you learned even just through one scrimmage? Yeah, we, we probably, uh, the way it looks right now, uh, we won't be as deep as we have been in the past, um, at least as of right now. If we were to start tomorrow, we probably would uh, probably can go no more than probably about eight to nine deep. Where in the past we've been able to go ten, sometimes even eleven deep. And so, as of right now, um, until these players continue to get better and learn faster, and it might happen this week in practice where we might be able to start going deeper. Where by the time the first game come around, but right now, uh, that's the one thing I learned. And we we went played most of all of our players. Actually, we played all of them and. Uh, and that was 15, 16 players that we, 15 players that we played. Because one player was, two actually 14 players we played because two of them were hurt. And I didn't want to put them in. And so we played 14 players. And so um, we got a chance to see pretty much everybody. Well, it's quite premature. Do you see what type of personality this team might have? Yes. Um, very coachable. Try to do the things you want them to do. At times, go outside the box. But we're trying to teach them when they do go outside the box that it's still within the bigger scheme of things. Um, because sometimes you're going to have to go outside the box. Like when they, they did a, a press, they did a run and jump um, against us. And so we had to kind of go outside the box a little bit. Uh, but we tried to keep them inside the big box so they can kind of still understand the concepts of what we're looking for. Our post players, we have to did a, do a better job. We've been on them today about demanding the, ball, demanding the ball more. And their version of demanding the ball and my version is way too different things. And so I know as a, as a player, and uh, Greg, you probably can remember this, as me as a player, uh, I, I try to demand the ball, even in pick up and everything else. I, anything, I'm trying to demand you know, the ball. And at all times, even when I wasn't open, I was open. So um, that's the, uh, the type of uh, demanding that I want them to have is, you know, like really want the basketball and make our, po our, our 
uh, make our perimeter players pass the ball inside to them. So. so what component of demanding are they lacking? Because there's different parts. One is being verbal, another is showing your hands, another is getting position. So what, what do you see? Two out of the three. They're getting position, but then they're not verbally calling for it, and then they're showing some hands, but they're not demanding them which hand to throw the ball to. And that's something our point guards have to recognize as well, too. And so we just did, a, you know, today we had a all-out session on perimeter feeding the post, post demanding the ball, post calling for the ball, and knowing which hand they wanted at, and then relocating and being able to pass out of the double team. So we just had a whole about a 20 minute session on that. And we'll go back to it again tomorrow to make it even better because that's something that we really wanted to establish is that inside presence. Vanessa had a pretty decent one. Wasn't her best, uh, but it was okay. Uh, Nina Carpenter uh, did a really good job for her first college scrimmage. She did some pretty good things. Uh, yeah, I think you guys would have been impressed with, but now she has to learn how to be in mental shape because she's a girl that can really get up and down the floor, but it was only for several possessions, and she's fast. Uh, but it was for several possessions, then she got winded, and then we had to kind of pull her out. So, What do we know about Wright State? Uh, very good team. Went to the WNIT last year. Um, they run a lot of dribble drive offense. Uh, which is that Wahlberg dribble drive and three are in the key. Um, letting a lot of threes fly with, you know, with two, about five seconds off the shot clock. There's a lot of time left. They're going to let them fly. If they leave them open, they're going to let them fly. Uh, really don't utilize the post presence that much, but they, really, they utilize her off of ducking under and dishing off to her. So uh, we got to do a good job of um, – being disciplined on our man-to-man -man concepts of being able to um, play one -on good one-on-one -on -one defense. Um, we've been working on this for a while now. We have a couple defenses that we'll be able to throw at them, some, some things that we're working on, as well as now the one that we're putting in today that we're working on. So I think we'll be okay. Do they have, I haven't looked at the roster. Do they have much size? I, mean, even though um, I think they had a couple girls that was like 6'2". Um, I know they lost their leading scorer who was averaging like 20-some points a game, so she's gone. That doesn't mean somebody else can't step into that spot, into that role and do it, but I know that she's gone. And But I know they did have a post player that was like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, and, and I think they might have one more, I believe. So um, you know, they do have a little bit of size, but they're really uh, guard-oriented. Guard when you say lost her to graduation? Yes, okay. graduation, right. yeah. How do you, how do you uh, if you can, how do you get a team first game when everybody sort of wants to be perfect or whatever to play with the intensity that you want when you see league play? How do you get the how do you get the jitters out of the way and get a team to get off to a fast start? Well, hopefully, you know, like with this scrimmage we had, most of the, the jitters and a lot of the mental errors will be gone, and we can kind of get past that part because we've already played somebody else. That was, uh, that was one of the biggest things. We hadn't played anybody. Uh, Long Beach had already played somebody. They had played uh, SFU, San Francisco. And, you know, they, they had, so they had a game under their belt. So they kind of knew what to expect coming in. We didn't. And so now that we've gotten that out the way, even though we're going right into the real deal, um, I, I'm expecting a lot of those things to be gone, a lot of the bugs to be worked out, especially like energy and effort and just communication. Those things will be worked out. And now we just got to play basketball, relax and play basketball. And you didn't even hear me say about Jasmine Johnson having a good scrimmage. She, you know, is anxious. Just, and, you know, J.J. is all over the place already. So mm -hmm. just imagine first game playing against somebody else. She was all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so getting her relaxed. Uh, Kate, getting her relaxed, um, getting Vanessa relaxed. Uh, getting, once we get those players re relaxed and knowing that they've gotten all that stuff out of the way now, we're going to be okay. So other than chemistry and verbal and energy, um, what was the statistical bug that you want to clean up the most? Turnovers. You know, we, we turned it over in the half-court setting, trying to feed the post at times. Uh, not having that that uh, that chemistry that you were talking about, you know, that uh, hand eye, you know, m my eyes to your hand, that verbal communication, um, throw it here, throw it now, uh, that, you know, turning the ball over that way, 
And sometimes getting anxious on the fast break, we'll get the rebound, secure it, and we're off to the races. And then we might make a, a long pass over the top and our post player is not ready or it's too long. Uh, the timing of it and our post players missing a lot of like we, they missed a lot of passes. Vanessa dropped a lot of passes that were easily could be caught and finished around the rim. So just turnovers and uh, that comes out, you know, when the first game, first game jitters. Do you have any more questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Good. Doing good. He was real sour after they lost that game because he was south right. He was what? Oh, south. South, right. Yeah. So that was like, yeah. I was supposed to be at that game, but we had a guy call out and he was shooting two games. That's how I ended up getting those two games at GV and uh -huh. Ridgeview. So. Yeah. But I was set to go to that one. Oh, really? I knew he was going to be there. So yeah. Was like, yeah. He said he was pretty sour after the loss. Yeah. First was. time in what, like 10 years, right? Yeah, about eight, I think it was. Eight. Coach said it was 10, the North coach, but it was, it was only eight. Oh, was it? Yeah. Still, see, like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You call yourself a season. Yeah. Absolutely. You know.